All right, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, welcome you back to the uh, Steve Malzberg Show. And it's interesting, uh, talking uh, as we were uh, with, the, uh, with the panel in the previous hour about uh, two, two, two subjects here, and, and these are kind of uh, dovetail with those. Uh, first of all, you know, we were talking about uh, uh, the, the, the Boston Marathon and talking about what we have shown the terrorists. Well, at the same time, uh, we have been uh, using drones to, uh, to bomb several uh, terrorists in Yemen, um, killing members and leaders of uh, al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, according to reports. A drone strike or a suspected drone strike uh, in southern Yemen today uh, was the third such deadly attack on al-Qaeda terrorists in the area in just two days. Now, this has you know, gotten very little attention for the most part, and uh, I think it deserves uh, more attention. Uh, Yemeni security officials uh, and tribal chiefs say that several al-Qaeda terrorists were killed Monday. That's today. Of course, they're ahead. So uh, anyway, including a local uh, terrorist commander. By the way, I'm putting the word terrorist in. The story written um, by, uh, it's, it appears on Fox News, and it's, uh, I don't know if it's an AP report or what, but they use militants. To me, they're terrorists. They're not militants. They're terrorists. Anyway, um, uh, including uh, the, um, the um, local militant, as they put it, commander. And uh, the tribal leaders identified the killed commander as Munasir al-Anbori. Uh, it was unclear how many total terrorists died, but there was talk uh, that more than 40 fighters might have been killed in the drone attacks in the last three days. So, um, you know, sending a message here at home by persevering and running the marathon, uh, and sending a message in the continued fight. But, you know, on one hand, the administration likes us to believe that al-Qaeda is no more. Uh, Al-Qaeda is uh, not to be considered as big a threat, not, you know, because after all, we got Osama bin Laden, we keep hearing. Uh, but the drone attacks continue, and I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. I actually give credit to Barack Obama for doing this. But if this were George Bush using the drones in this fashion, and, 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 you know, and, and, and making the decisions and the declarations when it comes to killing Americans overseas if, if the administration decides that they're a terrorist threat. George Bush, you know, would have been, wouldn't have survived this kind of, uh, these kind of actions without severe, severe, I'd like to say scrutiny, but name calling and scrutiny. Severe name calling, as he, as was the case, you know, right along throughout his uh, his two terms. Okay, so um, actually, one, one uh, in one case, the BBC reported three suspected Al Qaeda terrorists were traveling in a car in Shabwa province early today when a missile struck, destroying the vehicle. And that's you know that's that's what Israel does to Hamas and Hezbollah terrorists in retaliation, usually um, to terrorists who planted a rocket, and then they're driving away, or shot off a rocket, I should say, they're driving away, or terrorist leaders, or people who have plotted terrorist attacks over time, and Israel usually manages to hunt them down. And of course, they incur the, uh, the condemnation of many, many nations, and sometimes including the United States, who urges restraint or whatever, but I'm glad we're doing this if we're doing this. And I, again, show the terrorists at home that we can't be beaten by perseverance, by the Boston Marathon, going ahead as normal, going ahead better than ever, and continue the fight uh, against the terrorists, uh, you know, abroad. I think that's very important. And then, um, you know, we were talking about the Keystone Pipeline, and there's a couple of things I wanted to bring up to you. One, biofuels, biofuels made from the leftover harvested corn plants. You know it, you love it. Um, you know, we talk about uh, all these kinds of... Uh, of uh, you know, I guess alternatives, energy alternatives. We do? Okay. We're going to put that on hold. We'll get back to it. But uh, joining us now, uh, as uh, we had uh, planned, is the one and the only Bill Rogers, uh, four-time winner of the Boston Marathon, who was the, the, the man of the hour. He was in the lead car. He was the grand marshal of the Boston Marathon today. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. My legs aren't sore at all. <laughs> uh, you know, four wheels under you will do wonders, won't they? It was very, very, very exciting, and to 
to be leading the marathon in that way, you know, and saying hello to everybody and just, just it was a fantastic day. And uh, I don't know if you felt it in New York. I hope the reverberations are going all over the U.S. worldwide. I'm much looking at the TV now, seeing the runners come in. But what a spectacular day! It is just unreal. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, talk about talk talk about you know starting it and talk about you know finishing it and and what you saw along the way and and how people reacted and 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 and, and tell me tell me what it was like because we are here in New York. We watched it on television when we could and we saw the runners cross yes. the finish line. An American one, and that's got to be uh, heartwarming in a, in the specialty of today. But talk about what you went through. You know, along the way, it was just, it was classic Boston, you know, it was, I, what I like the most, you see all these, you know, a lot of young kids out there with their families, it's, it's just a, it's kind of like a holiday here, it is a holiday, it's Patriots Day, and, and um, but I think, of course, being, following last year's uh, really tough, tough day here in Boston, at the Boston Marathon, it was time for redemption. And that's what it was, and that's what I'm seeing. And everyone with their arms up in the air crossing the line, all those tens of thousands of people. But it was even more than that. You know, it was Mayor Menino, our mayor for 20 years, walking up to greet the new Boston mayor in this beautiful day. And, uh, and just seeing so many people at the finish line, it, was, it has to be one of the most spectacular, if not the most spectacular Boston Marathon I've ever been at. And partially it was due to the, the athletes and our Olympians and Meb Kafazigi taking the title. An American takes the title. You know, so many years after Greg Myers win and breaking the, the domination. But, but yeah, that, was, that, was that was 1983. That was a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. Long time. So it's very hard for, for, to, to defeat the Kenyans, the Ethiopians. It seems like the men's field just fell apart. One guy was pretty close to Meb, but he held him off. He has great heart. And the women's race was spectacular as well. Something like four or five women went under the course record. I think that was because America's Shalane Flanagan forced the pace for 20 miles, trying for the win. You know, she wanted to win it so bad because of what happened last year. And I think her effort was worth the win. You know, it was just she gave it heart and soul. And uh, that's what the marathon's about and everything. And Steve, you and I had talked earlier about the unifying effects of this sport on people and, uh, and how it's a global sport. And I've heard since then that something like 80 countries were represented here wow. at Boston. It's as big in that regard as New York City Marathon, I think, maybe our most international city. You know, so it was a great day, great day for Boston. It's yeah. just fun. But more than just for Boston, I think it was a great day for I don't know, our country and maybe a repudiation of that violent attack, you know. I was talking about that before you came on, how, uh, you know, at the same time we're getting reports of, of, of drones uh, taking out terrorists in Yemen. Uh, we, we, we showed here today uh, that the terrorists cannot beat us as well by what took place in Boston, and I'm so glad it went off w without a hitch. And, uh, you know, I guess Boston, they, they were saying, uh, was the safest place on the face of the earth today. Yes, I heard that as well, but I, I would always say, Steve, that would always be true of any road race or marathon, because we all get along, and it's a time where, like we talked before, it doesn't matter about all the dividing issues we look at. So I just think it's a, it's, it is more than a sport. All of these people proved it. I think we all proved it, everyone. It wasn't, uh, you know, it was Meb, it was Shalane, it was Rita Jeptu from Kenya. Uh, it, it's all the people out there doing their best. It was the media. And by the way, the, Bill, you know you're going to have to cool. you're going to have to take your book, Marathon Man, which is a great book. We had John for it a year ago, and you're going to have to yes. you're going to have to update it with a couple of new chapters. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It was just it was just an off the charts day. It, it was kind of the way you know New York City Marathon came back last year after Sandy, the devastation of Sandy, right. and. Um, I don't know. Something is happening here, and it's just a great, great experience. And, and going forward, going forward, you see it just getting stronger and stronger every year. I do, but I think today was special. Yeah, sure, sure. The, you know, this was. You know, I've probably been to 40 Boston marathons, and I've won a marathon on five continents, and I've seen the Olympics and everything. But 
this was something different. And you really, you almost can't even put it into words. You're a journalist, you know, but I just think it was different. You can't explain it, you know. It's, wow. Everyone's in a great mood. Listen, I love seeing that. I'm That's so, everything. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so glad you led, the, uh, you led the festivities. I really am because there's nobody who deserves it. Uh, more than you, you're, you're, you're a living legend in, up there in that race and, and in marathon running. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to know you and talk to you. Thank you, uh, Bill. Appreciate it very much. Got to go. Thanks a lot, Steve. Take talk care. Bill again. Rogers, we're coming back with Give Me Five. Don't miss it. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show.